Good evening. Hi, and welcome to the Rotary Meeting. The, good evening, the meeting of the Rotary E Club of District 7710 on March 16. Our speaker this evening is uh, Vito. I'm gonna, it was Vito. I'm not gonna, Vitalia. I got it now. Vitalia. Okay, I got it. Uh, Vitalia was born in. Oh, Vitalia was born in. Oh, I can't pronounce where you were born. It was in Russia. You don't have to make that long introduction, Doris. Okay. You just say Vitali, founder of RCF. That would be good. I'll explain the rest. Okay. Well, you did it. All right, then, because I was looking at this here. I go, wow. Okay. Doris. So now I turn it over to you. Yeah. Excellent. How much time do I have? You have like 35 minutes, about 35. And then, well, I'll say 40 and you give us time to do QA. Okay, so my program is in around 25 minutes, so I guess I will speak a little bit slower to uh, kind of stretch it for 35. Well, whatever you, whatever you feel is fine with us. Yep, yep, yep. Thank but, you uh, for coming. Yeah, yeah, I'm just kidding, but uh, thank you very much, Doris, for the invitation, ladies and gentlemen. It was a pl it's a pleasure to be here in front of you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to share about organization and the program that I'm very passionate about for a number of years. I'll tell you all about that. I'm a musician, I'm not computer whiz, but I worked my way around the Zoom and I figured out how to put this kind of presentation. I hope you find it enjoyable, entertaining and educational. Uh, since August of last year, I presented over 350 presentations for the Rotary Clubs worldwide. And most of the times I get pretty good feedback, so I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm uh, glad to be here. I'm sure I'm at a great club with the great people. I'm sure you're doing good things for the local community. I'm sure you're doing some things involved with the international projects. I just want to start my presentation with the words that I'm very proud to be one of you. One of 1.2 million Rotarians around the world. And my presentation will be about an organization called RCF. It started as a Rotary Children's Fund, but later on we had to rebrand it to RCF and its International Cultural Exchange Program. I'll tell you all about that. Right in the beginning of the program, I want to say for the best experience of this program, put me in the speaker mode. So there's a top right corner, put me on the big screen because there will be things happening behind me and you'll be able to better see me, uh, see things that I want to show to you. So right in the beginning, let me say that, that uh, Rotary has great youth exchange program. Everybody familiar with that? Uh, around 40,000 students will be studying someplace abroad under Rotary supervision. Great program, successful program, but we're not part of that. We do work with the youth, with the young uh, adults, but we're not youth exchange, just to be clear. Rotary had great GSE program, and uh, I've been involved in this program when the groups came to our district 7710 in the past from Colombia, from Argentina, from France, from Belgium. And since I had a big vein, I always offered and traveled with these groups around. But we're not part of that either. Rotary has great friendship exchange program. I've been a part of this program before <laughs> pandemic started and uh, had a great time in the Croatia. Had a, such a great time that I came in and I offered my services. I offered to join the friendship committee. Um, and uh, I want to do this again and again. Great program, but we're not part of that either. <laughs> it is one of the organization that was started by Rotarian or the Rotary Club, because I truly believe the power of Rory is each one of us in the, with the success experience behind us. But because when we Rotarians come up with a great idea, great uh, project that makes a difference and we Rotarians support it, we can be successful. Most of the times we are successful. One of the most successful stories in the modern time is the Polio Plus program that everybody knows, everybody recognized that started some way like that. So the presentation today that I'm going to speak about will be one of those that was inspired by Rotarians, uh, put together by Rotarians and run by Rotarians. Since everybody Rotarians here, I would ask your permission to relate my program today to the four-way test. I'm sure that everybody knows it by heart. I just wanted to make sure, is this important for the E-Club of District 7710, that fifth thing, yeah. to have it fun? I hope so. 
because if yes. we have fun by doing good things, we can do more of that. So let's have some fun. Let's me start presentation with the first one. Is it the truth? Truth about what? About the program, about organization, about this presentation. To be able to better understand where I'm coming from and what I will try to tell you, you need to know a little bit about my background because I was the one who came up with this idea back in the last century. No, I mean in the 90s. So I was born right there in the south of Kazakhstan. It used to be part of the Soviet Union. Soviet Union fell apart. It became independent country, Muslim country, surrounded by the Muslim countries. I lived and raised there till 15. When I got 15, I left my home, went 3,000 kilometers away, went to the music school, music college, music conservatory, joined very famous touring company. By my 20th, I've been in the many different countries. And uh, in 1992, we got chance to come to United States as part of cultural exchange. We came, we toured for three, four weeks, had a great time. When there was a time to go big, friend of mine offered stay a little bit longer, see a little bit more of America. I thought, oh, there probably wouldn't be another chance for me to come to United States. That was that rare. So I thought maybe I should stay a little bit longer and see a little bit more of America. So I stood a little bit longer and a little bit longer <laughs> and a little bit longer eventually I immigrated to United States. That happens. I mean, we all immigrants here. We came this generation or few generations before. When I found myself in this wonderful free country of opportunities, I thought, what can I do? I couldn't do anything else. I was a musician, so I put together a music group. Music group called Moscow Nights. And in the middle of the 90s, it became a pretty popular group. We climbed up right to the top. We started to perform and travel like crazy every day performing arts centers concert series colleges universities we would travel between new york city to los angeles alaska hawaii islands europe people said that we were good we probably were good because we went through the music conservatory we spent 19 years in the school to learn the music we definitely were different with these instruments and in some way we were kind of successful you probably have a question how much money did you make to consider yourself successful. I'll say this way, at that time, in the middle of the 90s, performing every day, per day or per hour, each of us made more money than most people in Russia made per month. Mm. So in some way it was kind of successful. So we perform in the Disney World, we perform in a place called Dollywood, if you're familiar with that place. <laughs> and we were greeted by the famous people and influential people like, oh, this is Dolly, she's a very nice person. She actually has her own literacy project, and I met with her team at the few Rotary conventions uh, in the House of the Friendship. So by touring with the group, doing the performances and the gigs all over the country, one day we got invitation to do presentation at the meeting. We didn't have any idea what kind of meeting that's going to be. It was no different to us. We did it too often. But a friend of us, who we respected very much, said, pay attention. Excellent. Great people will be gathered at that meeting. So it's intrigued us. We came in and it's ended up, it was a Rory meeting. 1995, Denver, Colorado, district meeting. There was around six, 800 people. There were many representatives from Rotary Clubs through the United States. And there's many Russians and uh, um, Rotarians from the different uh, post-Soviet republics there. Our mission was to put flavor of Russia to that meeting because there were so many Russian Rotarians. So we came on the stage, did the presentation, and after that, we were offered the table to stay as there as guests. It's a pretty normal thing for us Rotarians to be hospital, right? So we got our table and we started to listen, conversation, what will happen there. Things that I heard at that meeting changed my life. I'm pretty sure that every one of you had your reason to join Rory. You join Rory because you heard about wonderful things that Rotary does around the world and you want to be a part of it, you join Rory. Maybe you join Rory because you saw that the E-Club of the District 7710 doing great things for the local community. You want to volunteer, participate, and you join Rory. Maybe you join Rory because you got a call from Doris or Rhonda, and they said, hey, come and join our group. We meet once a week, and it's a great group. We're doing good things, and uh, you join Rory. I don't know. You had your reason. My reason was right there at that meeting. I was uh, uh, looking and hearing that what people will talk. One club will stand up and will say, ladies and gentlemen, our club traveled to Siberia, to in Russia. So there's uh, lots of sick people. There's uh, uh, 
there's uh, some facilities there are doctors but doctors cannot really help their people because they're lacking medical equipment anything that we can do to help those people in this difficult time another club stand up and will say yes we are aware of this problem we've been traveled there as well so uh we have the medical equipment local hospital did renovation and we have it for five million dollars we would like to de de designate it to this project only problem will be how to deliver it there another club stood up and said if you guys do that we have a few people who we would like to volunteer go there and set up and install this equipment there our experience will have some great time but still has to be delivered another club stood up and said we have a connection with the air force we fly to that part of the world so give us your equipment give us three four weeks of the time and we'll take care of that consider it done and the speaker said done let's move to the next topic when i heard that it put goosebumps on my skin because I immediately felt I'm in the company of great people, people with a good will, with the success experience, people who can make things done. And uh, I uh, told to myself, I want to learn about organization. I want to become a part of this organization. And in the future, if there's a chance, I would like to contribute by being a part of this organization. And that time I lived in a place called Boulder, Colorado. Did you hear about that little town, Boulder, Colorado? very special town at that time people called it a republic of people i don't know what's that mean but it was pretty expensive to live there i was putting on guy playing accordion there people on the weekends will come by hundreds to the pearl street mall to listen to me play accordion but my music business moved me to cleveland ohio and my friends started to make fun of me what happened in your life you had to make that move from boulder colorado to cleveland ohio mm -hmm. I didn't understand the humor yet because I didn't hear the stories about the burning rivers in Cleveland yet. These stories are old like dinosaurs. But uh, when I moved there, I was referred by the district governor of uh, Colorado to another district governor in Ohio. And I became the youngest member of the Lakewood Rocky River Rotary Club on the west side of Cleveland. Um, a pretty big club, around 150 people will be coming to the meeting. When I said I became the youngest member of the club, you heard that? So it's mean when I come to the meeting of 150 people, uh, Diana, you, you probably remember the 90s, they in the, this 150 people, people crowd, the next person by the age after me uh, could be my grandfather. But I knew I'm in a great place with the great people. There's a lot I can learn from them. I want to be like that. One of my sponsors of the club was the gentleman. He was the World War II veteran. He was the one of those soldiers who in 1945 on the April 25th met with Russian soldiers on the Elba River. And I knew that my grandfather is fighting on another side of that river at the same time against the Nazis. So many years passed. In the 90s, veterans found a way to get in touch and started to communicate with each other. So it's worked out that uh, our veterans and uh, some of the Rotarians went to visit to Russia, to Volgograd, former Stalingrad. And when they went there, they had a, such a great visit that they chartered their uh, Volgograd Rotary Club that became pretty popular and pretty active club. When the Rotarians from there started to come to United States and to Cleveland, by being a Russian background and speaking two languages, I became a translator, entrepreneur, driver, host, and everything else. And I was happy to be it because Mayor of Volgograd was guest at my house. So that was a big honor. When I saw that people from the different sides of the Iron Cold War got together and made such a great, a great understanding and a friendship between them, they convinced me that you cannot fool those people anymore with the propaganda that our governments fed to us for so many years. That would convince you that you cannot be friends, you're so different, you have to look at each other as enemies, you have a different values in your life. So to me, it was a sign if this kind of exchanges can really make the difference and improve relationship between people in the countries, maybe we can create the system and multiply this kind of experiences. So uh, I had an idea, proposed it to the club. A uh, few respectful people supported me. We had a few meetings. In the end, on August 27, 2003, fully formed and registered Rory Children's Fund was funded by the Lakewood Rocky River Rotary Club. Later on, we had to rebrand it to RCF, but the main idea of the organization was to build cultural bridges and manage cultural exchanges between countries in the world. I actually had the chance to travel and make a little presentation in the presence of the Rory president at that year. And that was me when I was young. Uh, 
somehow I feel he doesn't remember that meeting. To me, it was a pretty memorable thing to meet with the RI president and have a little speech. So it was something exciting. So this is how we started to bring groups uh, over from country to country, promote multicultural understanding. Without that, people will come forward and will say, you're doing great things. We would like to support you. It didn't happen right away. We really had to work out the system, get in touch with the Rotary Clubs in different countries, educational institutions, different organizations, select young people in different countries, create opportunities for them to travel across the border to, and uh, to come to United States, uh, present these programs to the different organizations and the companies and convince them that this program makes difference. It's worth it to be supported. So this is how we started. And uh, let's go to the next one. Is this fair to all concern? In this program, in this organization, probably the most concerned people are participants. Since 2003, we had a quite a few different groups from different countries travel across the border. Over, one, uh, over 40 groups came to the United States each group will come in a group of 15 people from one or another country. Each group will travel between 15 to 25 states. Each group will present their programs for up to 50,000 people. And uh, overall, since 2003, we reached over 1 million people. I mean, I'm not talking about social media, TV, radio, etc. I'm talking that over 1 million people came to the live presentations of these groups. I think it's pretty good accomplishment for any kind of nonprofit organization. So we're very proud of this number. It was easy to start with Russia because my Russian connections, but later other countries joined like Ukraine, like Armenia, like uh, Lithuania, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Georgia, and other countries. And when young people come in uh, before, uh, when they present their programs and tell about their country, uh, when they meet with you, they really break the stereotypes. I'm talking about your stereotypes. For example, how much do you know about country of Armenia or Georgia before you meet with these young people who will tell you all the best of their country? How much do you know about Ukraine? In the news, we see that something is happening there, but we don't have any idea what's the country is Ukraine and what is this about. How about Kazakhstan? I was born there. I was raised there. Uh, if you didn't see movie Borat, you probably don't know anything about Kazakhstan. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to be funny. <laughs> I tried to watch that movie a couple of times. I can tell you that there is nothing in that movie about Kazakhstan except the name and the flag that they use. But actually, when that movie came out, the first one, our organization was invited to Kazakhstan. We met with Minister of Culture. We offer the young people group from Kazakhstan and we toured them to the United States uh, to be a part of the program to introduce the history, culture, tradition of Kazakhstan, what it's really about. So it was a good outcome after that movie. When we put together the programs and the tours for the groups to come to United States, we make sure they get a great impression of United States. We put, set, set it up so they visit national museums, le, uh, local museums, they learn the history of the United States, they meet with the people, visit national monuments, visit Washington DC. So uh, it's basically breaks their stereotypes. Before they come in, they have stereotypes about United States from Hollywood movies. And when they learn the truth thing about United States, they fall in love with that. When they do perform the programs and present about their country, Around 65-70% of all the programs that each group present happen in the public schools, colleges, and universities. Before each group comes, we work with them for a couple months, put together a study guide that thick. We send it to all the schools that we're going to see their, uh, these groups to perform. Kids learning about for a couple months about this country and everything uh, related to that. And when a group will come, they present the program in the form of assembly, performance, class visit, workshop, residency, etc. From the things that you heard so far, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think? Will this kind of program build a goodwill and better friendships? Difficult to imagine that it will not. When young people from different countries come to the United States and introduce their culture and history to the people in the United States, when they learn about the United States and learn the truth, what the United States is about, when they make friends and build cultural bridges, it's definitely build a goodwill and better friendships. But will it be beneficial to all concerned? If we're talking about the young people who participate in the program, and there were over 500 of them from 16 to 21, most of the times the chance for them to come to the United States and see all these things uh, is so small, they often have better chance to become 
astronauts and go to the moon in their own country, then chance to come to the US embassy, apply for the visa and get it. Because it's pretty hard process and it's pretty, pretty borders are pretty closed, I will say. But here they come, they travel, they see, they learn, they experience. It's a lifetime opportunity for them. So it's definitely beneficial to the young people. Is this beneficial to our kids and grandkids in the schools who see all these programs? From the things that we hear from teachers and from parents, it's an absolutely fantastic opportunity for kids to get exposed, to see, learn, and understand the world that they're going to live in is much bigger than just Raleigh, than North Carolina, than even United States. If they realize and they understand that there's a different races, there's a different diversity in the world, there's a different cultures, there's a history behind each corner, each country of the world, they will live different life. They will understand the world differently. So it's definitely beneficial to them. It's been proven all the time. Is this beneficial to the older kids? I guess so, because we get invitations and we do perform and visit the Duke, UNC Chapel Hill, UNC Wilmington, UNC Charlotte, and all the universities through the United States during the tours. Is this beneficial for the general public? I guess so, because these groups are invited and perform in the cultural festivals all over the country where between 300 to 10,000 people will come to see their programs because they are true cultural representatives of their country. Different denominational churches like to open the doors and invite these groups in to show and teach them that we live in a free country, in God we trust. This is the values the country is, was built on and we would like to learn how it happened in your country and how is life there. The number one fans of this program are senior citizens because they appreciate the energy, music, instruments. We always like to line up on many pro, as many programs as we can for our respected senior citizens. Every time when we travel, we visit between 15 to 25 Rotary Clubs. And the groups usually offer the performances and programs for the Rotary Club meetings, contribute for the fundraising events, something for the socials, put together event for the community, bring everybody together and let uh, highlight this country and uh, let everybody know. This is the uh, one of the ways we connect the world and let people to try to understand each other better. So pretty much uh, uh, performing in all these places, performing arts centers, colleges, universities, Disney World, and uh, we've been supported by the congressmen, senators, some of the mayors of the cities. Every time when we meet with them in person, they will say, Rotarians involved, it must be good. We'll support you because uh, it's a great thing that you're doing. We usually finish our programs in Washington, D.C. We put together an event. The embassy of that country will support the event. And media will come up and will say, this is the true cultural ambassadors. They did such a good things for the relationship between our countries. We take it as compliments. We do get lots of publicity from the newspaper, from radio, from TVs, and everywhere we'll put it out. The Rotary Club sponsored this, Rotary Club support this, Rotary leads the way, connects the world. Is there any one of you who had a listening presentation had chance to be at the Rotary convention before? Excellent, Doris. So you probably will be with me on that. When you get to that crowd of 10, 15, 20,000 Rotarians, uh, you can really feel that buzz. That goodwill force is definitely there, like in Star Wars. Especially when you go to the conventions, you can feel, see, and understand how much offer energy and resources Rotary puts to bring young people in, to educate them what the Rory is about, so they grow and join us at Rory. Remember this convention in Toronto? There's a closing. 15,000 of us Rotarians and around 1,000 Rotary actors will run along the aisle to the main stage. Nothing, nothing special, but lots of noise. We can see them, we can hear them, we can feel them. We know young people with us, they're here. They're following us, we have the future. So it's a great thing to realize. Another convention in Hamburg, Germany, it was such a big convention. We had the two openings and two closings. Stage was the size of the football field. In the pressure time, young people will walk on the stage one by one with the flex of their country will say, this is my country. Rotary is there and we're proud to be part of it. I think we're doing a pretty good job getting connected with the young people. Over uh, all of those, so over 500 young people who participate in the program six, since 16 to 21, they met with you, they learn about Rory, they got inspired with you. They go back, they become already part of us. They join the Rotary Student Exchange Program, Rotary Act, and eventually they join Rory. This group behind me, it's a group from Ukraine. They traveled through, came back, got in touch with the club, with the district, and they chartered 50 people Rotaract club. 
There's another, since we're in North Carolina sample, there was a girl. She was 17 years old. She participated in the program, met with Europeans, got inspired, went back, graduated university, came back, got her master's degree here. Right now she is here in North Carolina. She is teaching in NC State. She is my neighbor, got married, bought house in my neighborhood, bigger house, and a few months ago had her first baby. So make us feel proud that she was a part of the program and right now where she is right now. You probably have question how this kind of program operates, well, who coordinates that. Well, let's say it this way. We figured out the way and everybody who is involved, Rotarians, everybody volunteers. When the group travels, we convince the people and organizations that we're doing the right things that makes difference. And we convince people and organization to support our organization so we can raise money for the next group to have same kind of experience. So we got uh, some support from the Rotary Clubs, from the different arts organizations. We got support from the private foundations through the Rotary Foundation, from the Walmart who's sponsoring events all over the country, from the Mercedes, from the different colleges and universities. In the future, when groups will come to North Carolina, you probably see one of those. 15 passenger van with the 15 young people and everything what they need for the programs and presentations will be right there. In that trailer, sound equipment, music instruments, personal belongings, and even sleeping bags, just in case they got stuck someplace. So pretty much, ladies and gentlemen, ah, another thing I guess I have to say since we're in North Carolina, we had for the number of years, we had some problems uh, with the beat. Sometimes it breaks in the way, sometimes something's happened. And uh, after realizing how important to have reliable transportation uh, for this program to continue for us to travel with, a uh, few good friends of us supported us, a few Rotary Clubs thrown a few bucks in the bucket, and the Mercedes-Benz of Fayetteville said, we would like to fulfill our corporate responsibilities. We would like to provide you a vehicle, diagnose it, fix it if needed, change oil for free and shine it up before each tour so you feel proud of what you do. Please do what you do. So we're thankful to all our supporters. And uh, I, I thank you, Diana and Barry, for the support in this case as well. So this is what we got. We got a 15 passenger 2020 Mercedes-Benz Sprinter van sitting on the driveway, zero miles, fully loaded, waiting when pandemic ends. And we can bring all these young people from all over the world to share with us, to learn about the United States and have a great experience to continue our program. So in the future, ladies and gentlemen, when the groups will come to North Carolina, I would encourage you to think about that and visit them at one or another programs and show them your Rotarian support. Or maybe even think to keep them for a day or two, just uh, so they have opportunity to bring it to your kids and grandkids, to the schools, do something for the senior community, do something for the club, do something for the social, put together an event, bring the community together and let everybody know by highlighting the country. This is just one of the ways we connect the world and improve relationship and understanding between people. If you're thinking, if we host them, how we talk with them, they speak different languages. Uh, basically, they uh, most of them take English as second language. If somebody has problems, uh, Miami University support the program and they take free courses a few months in advance so they feel comfortable before they come and meet with you. And by finishing my presentation, ladies and gentlemen, did I stretch it for 35 minutes, Doris? <laughs> I'm finishing, I'm finishing. It's so an awesome got, job. If you got the impression, ladies and gentlemen, that this, uh, this program is just a touristy, funny opportunity for young people to see the world, travel to the United States, perform and have fun, fun, fun. You may be wrong. Just think about that. How many of these 15 people, young group, have to do presentations in four, five weeks to reach 50,000 people? Did you ever try to travel 10,000 miles in four, five weeks with hour by hour schedule? Performing, traveling a few hundred miles, seeing with the people, visiting with the people, sleeping, traveling a few hundred miles, performing, visiting, seeing place, traveling, performing, traveling, performing, sleeping and sleeping bags. And it's going on for four or five weeks and things do happen. And setting and setting sound system, it's a job on its own. But sometimes things happen like tire will blow off in the middle of the night and you're off the schedule, people waiting and you try to deal with it. Sometimes somebody breaks the leg and everything changes, routine changes, concert changes. You deal with the hospitals, it did happen. Sometimes somebody gets the flu 
if one gets the flu, everybody gets the flu. They're in the same vehicle, but nothing stops. Show must go on. After four or five weeks traveling, seeing so many places, visited with so many people, performing so many places, they go back so happy, full of the energy and full of the experiences that they got, but they're going back that tired. With the time change, often they sleep for two weeks. And then for years, they will call and think, you, Europeans, thank you for that great experience and the impact that will stay with them for all their life. I've been with the groups a number of times before. I've seen the effect of this program on everybody involved, participants, audience, uh, rotor actors, supporters, hosts, if you're Rotarian or not Rotarian. This program and this organization is truly opportunity for service above self. If you'd like to learn more about the program, you can learn it from the YouTube channel. There's a videos that each group always create and put it there. And we're always looking for the new groups from different countries to participate. There's a Facebook page. If you like to be notified when groups coming in, they would like to visit with you and see you at their presentations and share with you. So if you like the Facebook, you'll be notified about the future events. There's a website address called uh, RCF, Rotary Children's Fund. There's some history and the future plans there. Also on the website, there's a couple of buttons. One of those is donate. Another one is Venmo. No Doris, I'm not asking for the money. It's not I didn't a say anything. <laughs> I didn't say. <laughs> I'm just telling it in case. You if somebody, it to the, you if it somebody to the... here feels this kind of program makes difference and worth it to be supported, please keep in mind, we were inspired by you Rotarians. We were put together by us Rotarians and we run it by us Rotarians. With your support Rotarians, we can go much farther to make the world better place to live for all of us. And I would like to finish my program with a little humor just to be able to see mm -hmm. smiles on your faces. If you Rotarians feel this kind of program is not worth it to be supported, you don't leave us any other choice, but go and ask help from Kawanas. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding, ladies and gentlemen. Well, young people in the background of me will tell you thank you for the great experiences that they got to learn about United States, learn about Rory, proudly represent their country in the United States and build another bridge between the United States and the world. I'll be happy to take any questions. The goal for the program is when pandemic allow us and we have the group already planned and from Belarus in August to start that program, to have the young people group from every country in the world, from every corner in the world, come here, share with us, learn about us, learn about country, learn about Rory, and build together the better world to live in. Very global program, yeah, but I think we can do this because we are not just Rotarians. We are proud members of the great organization that's called Rory International. Absolutely. That was the program that I prepared today for you. I hope you uh, enjoyed the presentation. If you have any questions regarding the program, I'll be happy to answer any of them. Okay, does anybody have any questions? Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. You have put the fun back into Rotary. <laughs> Wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. I wanted to ask you about your um I guess, process of the students, you know, exchanges are happening. You're having these students actually do all of this work. So I'm assuming that you have an application process that these students are in music and dance and, and you know, are you doing that work in their country before they come or are they already affiliated with organizations that have these type of, um, you know, arts and, and music students? Basically, we have the connections and relationship with the educational institutions, with the Rotary Clubs in different countries, or the different ensembles and the groups independently. We accept the application. Most of the times, uh, we just can accept the uh, at least in the beginning, start with YouTube. Because one of the requirements for the groups uh, that young people have to be from 16 to 21. Another is strong requirement. They have to be good in something in some kind of art to be able to make them cultural representative. They could be singers, they could be dancers, they could be a circus, they could be a choir, they could be a chess players team. If they're good in something, 
we will work with them. We have a group of people, specialists from different fields of arts who will work with them and put them together as the cultural ambassadors of their country and participate in the program. So we are looking for all the countries to participate and we pretty much, we take care of the uh, almost all of the expenses for the program. Does anybody else have any questions? Well, you didn't talk about uh, he had this for Christmas, where they had uh, the different ornaments that you can buy for your Christmas tree. Yes, yes. And this is we one of the ornaments. To do the fundraiser, yes. And uh, thank you for the supporting, Doris and Diana. And can you let us know when the groups come? Barry saw one at Fuquay Verena, and he said it was wonderful. Yeah, put us on your mailing list, please. Yeah, every time when the groups comes, they usually very good. I mean, they perform, in, as I listed before, in Disneyland. They perform in Carnegie Hall, Kodak Theater, and uh, they're, for the concert series, is performing arts centers. We have the specialists who will help them to put together, and they select the groups to make them cultural ambassadors. So they will be good. When they come to Triangle, Apex City gives us their cultural arts center. Oh, okay. Every mm -hmm. second Saturday of February for the last seven years, we're doing the festival there. We gather mm -hmm. there over 4,000 people every year. So you're welcome to that event or we can do anything else. This is how it will happen in the future. Uh, when they, we know that one or another group is coming in, when they get through visa process, because this is most painful process. When we know that they definitely coming, we, know, we have a few months. We'll send the emails and we'll say, dear Rotarians, Dear President, Secretary, you saw the presentation. This group will be here on this day. If you have, uh, can you pass it along to the Rotarians in the club? If you want to do anything with these groups, we can talk about the arrangements right now. If you want to host them, if you want to organize the event for community, for the schools, for the seniors, for the club, or you want just to say, let's guys just meet you on the line someplace so we can welcome you to North Carolina. Oh, that would be great. That yeah. would be really great. And this is where we start. When we get the connection, we'll say, yes, we're interested to stay in touch and we're interested to talk. And uh, from there, we will build it on. Remember, we have the system. We had over 40 groups that uh, went through. So we know exactly how it will happen, where it will happen, how it needs to be done. Logistic, it's all there. It's very well working mechanism. Can you give us your email so we can add you to our distribution and when we have our newsletters, you can tell us, hey, we're coming or, you know, Absolutely. Even we have people everywhere. So it's not just here that, you know, we could share. If you're in New Hampshire, we have members there or at, um, Seattle, Washington, or even in India, <laughs> we're going to there, but. <laughs> we would like to, we didn't have the, the group from India yet. We didn't have anybody from South, South America yet. Okay. So we're looking, we, we're looking, we're waiting for applications and we would like to make it as wide list as possible with the countries. How and about I, Africa? How about the continent? I would love Africa. to have the groups from Africa. Actually, okay. yeah, I, I met some people who actually came from, from Africa and who stood here and who were part of the one or another group. We actually here in the Fuquay, one, one of the gentlemen, good friend of us, he's actually a Rotarian too. So, if you have any suggestion for leads or the Rotary Clubs on the other side, please connect us. We'll make it happen. And for the, regarding the links, Rhonda, I put some links in the chat. Okay, thank you. So you can copy it there in the uh, email address is rotarycf at gmail.com and it's all there. Okay. Okay, and then also in the chat, the three little dots, I think we can save uh, what all the things is in the chat. You see the three little dots there, you can hit and you can save and you can see what was always in the chat. Yeah, I, well, when you come late, like I was, <laughs> all that yeah. stuff was before you joined, so I don't see any of it, but that's okay. Oh, okay, well, well I, I will hit it so it'll be saved. Thank uh, you. Save the chat. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so now I'm going to stop, uh, share, I'm gonna share the screen put everybody uh oh no that's not it where's my little button no oh, that's not it run to help me so i don't lose everybody i'm so i can give him his tip 
What are you, you trying to do? I'm just trying to get up to where I can share, uh, put everybody, oh, here it is. I think I don't. In the view, you want to change your view? On the yeah, so I can give corner? him his. Uh, okay, the top right corner, you, you're just seeing yourself if you turn to. Oh, share. Okay. okay. So you weren't sharing. Okay. okay, so now I go into my uh, bookmarker. I think I, I put it here. I think that's where I put it. Oh. Oh, no, it's not there. I put it in the bookmarker, so let me find it. Oh, here it is. Here it is right here. There we go. Thank you, Rhonda. Um, this is a certificate from Rotary E Club of District 7710. Certificate of Appreciation is hereby granted to uh, Batalia, I, I'm not going to butcher your last name, for imparting invaluable insight and inspiration as our guest speaker this evening. Awarded March 16, 2021, Doris Wallace, President 2020, 2021. Rotary E Club of District 7710. We thank you. And I will be following you. I, I'm following you on Facebook. We are Facebook buddies. So I'm following you. You've been getting a lot of the props out there, a lot of the support from different places where you've been visiting. So that's good. So you're really doing a lot out there uh, in the world and in the community. So we appreciate you. Thank you, Doris. By any chance, can you forward it to me in the attachment? This certificate I would like to share. I will. I will. I will. Okay. Everybody's back. So I'm going to stop the video. I want to stop it.